you know, all of your problems are solved when you go to Christ in the sense that like your worst problems are definitely solved because you're not going to go to hell anymore. And if you look at it from in comparison to every other problem you might possibly have, what else is there when you know that you're, you're saved from hell, you're saved from the punishment of your sins, and, and that you have eternal life? But on the other hand, you know, you can't take that truth and just apply it in the sense that like, well, you're not going to have any troubles or trials in this life and any, you know, of course you will. So we need, we need to understand that as well. And, and it's not necessarily a matter of God forsaking you when you go through hard times, but uh, there's many reasons why those things happen and why God allows them to happen. But anyways, that's all by way of introduction. It's real high level of, of all the content in this chapter. Let's dig into these verses because there's a lot of great material here. Verse number one, the Bible reads, We have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantedst them. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. So the psalm starts off just addressing the Lord, you know, speaking to God and saying, God, we heard about all the stories in the times past. We heard how you delivered your people out of Egypt. We, we heard the great power and might that you had and just casting out the heathen and, and, and knocking them down and planting your people in the land because you had favor to them. You know, we hear all these great stories, right? This is how they're, they're just opening up to God, just bringing up. Because what they're gonna, what it's gonna end up, the, the way, the path it's going, of course, is kind of where is that now, right? Like we've heard all these great stories, we know that you're able to do this, we believe, and we know that you've done this. You know, we trust this. We know this is to be true. Verse four: Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. So now it's kind of going to a, pre a present tense. Hey, you're my king. I'm serving you, Lord. Command deliverances for Jacob. Free us. Deliver us. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name will we tread them under that rise up against us. And I love this, this confidence and this assurance. Hey, Lord, with you with us, we're going to defeat our enemies. You can be with us. We'll, we'll you know, push them down. We're going to tread them down that rise up against us. Verse 6, For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. He's saying, Lord, I, it's not me. We know it's not me, but we know that we can do everything when you're on our side. We're not relying on our own strength. We're not relying on our might and our arms. We're relying on you. Verse 7, But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever, Selah. Now, and this is absolutely the right attitude to have, 100%. And this is taught all throughout Scripture. Great, great, great attitude to have towards the Lord. God, you're with us. Who could be against us? God, fight our battles for us. God, we're looking to you. We know you can do this. We have faith that you can do this. We're trusting in you right now. You're our king, and we're not going to lift ourselves up and, and be so proud to think that, that we are going to defeat our enemies. We know that you'll do it for us, and, and we're going to just have our boasting of you all the day long. And, you know, this is, a, this is the exact attitude that King David had. Remember, when he was younger, he didn't trust in his own flesh and his own might to go off and slay the giant. He wasn't trusting that he was just so mighty and powerful that he could beat this Philistine, and I could, you know... He's been a warrior for so long, but you know what? I did my special training and I was out. You know, that's not what he was trusting in. He was just like, Lord, I know that you can, you can beat even this guy who's making everybody to, to tremble and fear. But God, I know you could use me. I'm willing. Here I am. Use me and, and have the confidence of just being able. And that's why I love one of the things I love about that story is when you read that story, it says that David ran to meet Goliath. He didn't stumble, drag his feet. I mean, he ran. He had full confidence. He knew that God was with him. And this is, this is the confidence being given here. And this is a confidence that we ought to have as well.